Despite having the same brew several times before, it's still got a really intriguing taste. So I finally got to see Ex Machina and not at a theater all the way deep in the city in some weird, very private theater. Oh, I got to see it at a local theater, which is awesome because this means that indie hits are becoming more commonplace to be in normal theaters. This pretty much started with Moonrise Kingdom, and ever since then, indie flicks have had a better chance of being in the box office, which is fantastic. Now with It Follows and now Ex Machina, this shows that the indie film verse is becoming a more commonplace thing, which is awesome because then it's a lot easier to see these bloody movies. So the film Ex Machina is a film that's written and directed by Alex Garland. Alex Garland is one of my favorite filmmakers despite the fact that this is his first film that he's ever directed. He's written 28 Days Later, Sunshine, Never Let Me Go, Dread. This guy has some awesome writing creds, and now that he's put his writing into his directing, again, awesome creds. Ex Machina is about a guy called Caleb, played by Dominic Gleeson, who comes to this private estate, who's owned by Nathan, played by Oscar Isaac, who says, I have developed an AI and I want you to test it. But it's, of course, it's not really that simple. It becomes a game of who to trust. The test isn't just about testing Ava, who is this robot, AI, but it's actually testing Caleb to see who really is more human, the robot or him. And the overall arc that differentiates this film about AI from all other ones is it centers around sexuality. Forms of AI in film have differed from either a total colossal human destroying machine or a voice helping device voiced by Paul Bettany. But this one is different because it focuses on the primal human urge to reprocreate. Or that's what you think it is. It almost feels like this film is a con in a way. Because it's not a thriller, it's not really a horror movie, it's a in-depth look into what really would make an AI. Now there's always this very basic idea of, yeah, that an AI can be self-aware, but what about it makes it self-aware? Why in all iterations of AI is there a gender? What is specific about it being a female or a male? That's what this film questions, and I really applaud Alex Garland for going in this direction and making something different, making something that really makes you think. The whole time I was watching this movie, I'm just looking at everything going, this means something. This is a question towards what AI will be as well as what our humanity will mean. That's the other thing that this film doesn't talk about is, oh, what will humans be later on? when this AI is here. We've seen that before, you know, everyone always gets, oh, where, where does our humanity end when we create something that's this powerful? The other thing I can say about this film is that it's creepy. Oscar Isaac is this very intrusive and very different sort of guy. You think that he would be this very reclusive, very antisocial sort of nerd person, but he's this really in your face. He really wants Caleb to question Ava. He really wants to figure out what he thinks of her. He really wants Caleb to question what is Ava's purpose? And everything about this film is beautiful, despite the fact it's filmed mostly in an underground building. The cinematography is great, the set design is really nice. The music has this almost artificial sort of tone, but it still has this serenity, this building of life, which is something you see throughout the whole film. There's a lot of these plants that are in these glass walls, and it's kind of like life is trying to break out of these holes, which is kind of like what Ava is trying to do. I'd have to say this film really intrigued me right up until the end. If there was any complaints I were to have about this film, it would be that Dominic Leeson's acting, despite the fact that he has a really good American accent, is that it's kind of shallow at times. But I think this plays into the story that he is a weak person, he's easily manipulated, because that's kind of how this film plays out. It's all about manipulation. There's a film that I can compare this to in It's Shutter Island, but not as intense. You know, in that film, Leonardo DiCaprio is questioning his reality the entire time. And as you, you don't want to accept the truth right up until the very end of the film. This film is kind of similar. You're constantly questioning whose side Caleb should really be on. And in the end, it kind of surprises you of how it ends. It definitely surprised me. For some people, it will be a bit slow and a bit dry. And that's what this film kind of is. It's not an action film. It's not something that's really dramatic or thriller type. It's really making you question what 
AI would mean. So in the end, my final rating for Ex Machina is a 5 out of 7. It was a really cool watch though, and I really like movies that make me think about what the movie really means. So we've already had It Follows, and now we've had Ex Machina. I can't wait till the next movie that does that. Anyway guys, that's all from me. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Please buckle down.